Hello, everyone. My name is Tom Hessert. You might not recognize me, but you can find a picture of my Buick-powered IMSA Camelite race car in this brochure. And maybe you might even know someone who purchased a new Buick from my dealership in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I got some exciting news to share with you. There are new Buicks on the Great American Road. Just two of them are the 1991 Park Avenue and the 1991 Park Avenue Ultra. This car here is a 1991 Park Avenue. This car is available with a host of convenience features. Here's just a few of them. The 1991 Park Avenue and Park Avenue Ultra have been described as the most sophisticated cars Buick has ever offered. They're among the most advanced automobiles available. Extensive wind tunnel testing has resulted in a very quiet body shape. Many design features contribute to the quiet riding qualities, including the generously curved windshield, aerodynamic mirrors, and flush-mounted side glass. The aerodynamic drag coefficient has been reduced from 0.39 to 0.31. The powertrain features an updated more powerful V6, the 3800 tuned port injection engine. The engine delivers its power through the new Hydromatic 4T60E transaxle. This unit features electronically controlled shifting. Dual automatic comfort temp climate controls allow the driver and passenger to adjust their discharge air temperature separately. The remote keyless entry option allows remote locking and unlocking. Another available feature is the personalized automotive security system, which supplements other anti-theft systems. Some of the other available features include the memory seat and mirrors, and an express down driver's window that opens fully when the button is depressed for one half second or more and then released. Stop the window in any position by pressing the button again. The express sunroof operates in a similar way. Pressing the button once allows the sunroof to continue to open. The glossy finish on this car is the result of a new waterborne base coat paint system. This kind of base coat is very friendly to the environment because it releases 80% less solvent into the air than conventional base coats. The first step of this paint process involves dipping the body into huge tanks and applying electro deposition primer to the bare metal. Next, color keyed solvent base primer is sprayed over the first layer. This high solids primer is the same as the kind used for conventional systems. From here on, the process is different. Waterborne base color coats are applied in very thin, smooth layers. Then the base coat is flashed, not baked, for about three minutes at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The flashing process drives the water out of the base coat by circulating lots of warm air around the vehicle. Infrared heat panels assist this process. Finally, a solvent-borne clear coat is applied to the body. Here's another convenience feature, an overhead console with a lamp monitor display. The lamp monitor system uses LEDs to keep track of exterior lamp failures. When there's a problem with the lamp circuit, an LED flashes for about 10 seconds, then remains lit. The backlighting intensity of the LED display can be adjusted using the light control rheostat. At each power-up, the lamp monitor test illuminates the LEDs for three seconds. After the test, the lamp monitor screen displays any failure stored in its memory by flashing the appropriate LED for 10 seconds. The lamp monitor module loses its memory when the battery cable is disconnected. When the battery cable is reconnected, all of the lamp monitor LEDs flash on and off to indicate that the lamp monitor system must be initialized. To initialize the lamp monitor system, Turn on the park lamps for about five seconds. That's how long it takes for the lamp monitor module to reset its memory and establish that the lamps are operating. Here's another new feature, 
the deck lid and gas filler door switches are now located on the instrument panel just to the left of the steering column. The trunk release is also controlled by the deck lid security switch located in the glove box. The deck lid can only be released if the security switch is on and the gear selector lever is in the park position. The new Park Avenue and Ultra are equipped with a brake transmission shift interlock. This interlock prevents the operator from shifting into a drive range unless the brake pedal is depressed. By requiring that the service brakes be applied before shifting out of park, this system decreases the possibility of pedal selection errors which might result in unwanted acceleration. All Park Avenues are equipped with the Supplemental Inflatable Restraint, or SIR system. As you know, these systems can present hazards during service. For some service procedures, the SIR system must be disabled. Here's how it's done. First, turn the ignition switch off. Then remove the SIR fuse from the fuse block. Unplug the yellow SIR connector that's located at the base of the steering column. When the work is done, connect the yellow connector and install the SIR fuse. But before buttoning things up, turn the ignition switch to run. And make sure that the inflatable restraint lamp operates properly. For detailed information on the SIR system and safety precautions, refer to the service manual and or electrical service manual. Now let's take a closer look at the dual automatic comfort temp climate control system. To access the climate control self-diagnostics, press the off and warm buttons. Three self-diagnostic tests can be performed. The data test indicated by 01, the override test, and a clear codes command. Press the auto button to terminate the self-diagnostics. The driver side outlet air temperature is set at the AC control head in the instrument panel. Using the climate controls mounted in the door trim panel, a passenger can adjust air discharge temperature for optimum comfort. This air delivery diagram shows that comfort temp climate controls actually consist of two parallel HVAC units. One half of this unit delivers air to the driver's panel, windshield, and floor outlets. The other half of this unit delivers air to the passenger panel, windshield, and floor outlets. When the passenger requests maximum heat, the passenger air mix valve directs most of the passenger side airflow through the heater core. Now the passenger side air discharge temperature is much warmer than the driver's side. And that was a simplified explanation of airflow. Refer to the ESM for specific information on the Comfort Temp Climate Control System. Supplemental sunshades or another Park Avenue feature for 1991. There's something else that I think is a great idea, the rear door child security latches. After actuating this lever, the rear doors cannot be opened from the inside. They must be opened from the outside. Previous door designs often required service operations to be performed through a small access hole in the inboard door panel. That has all changed on the 1991 Park Avenue and Ultra. These doors have been completely redesigned for improved service access. They now feature modular construction. Most of the door's internal components attach to a unit called the door module. The inner door handle, window lift motor, and counterforce spring are all mounted on the door module. The driver's side also has the express down module mounted on the door module. When removing the door module, make sure that all electrical connectors are unplugged and the sash channel is disconnected from the cross arms. Then, lower the window carefully into the bottom of the door. 
This new door design allows the entire inboard panel to be removed for service access. Here's another example of attention to detail. This valve allows a spare tire's air pressure to be checked without removing it from the car. This job is much easier on this car than on many others. The driveline has also received lots of attention. Buick is the first General Motors division to offer an advanced, more powerful version of the popular V6. This updated engine is the L27-3800 tuned port injection V6. A new torque axis powertrain mounting system effectively isolates the engine movement. This system provides a low vibration idle, smooth acceleration, and minimum noise when shifting from park to drive. The torque axis is the central pivot point of powertrain movement. When the engine rocks under load or torque reversal, this pivot point is like the invisible center of an axle. When the engine moves, it moves around an invisible axle, the torque axis. Positioning a mount at this pivot point allows better isolation of engine movement. The L27-3800 tune port injection engine produces 170 horsepower. That's five more than the LN3. It also puts out 220 pounds feet of torque, 10 more than before. But these figures don't really tell the whole story. Engine durability, serviceability, sealing, cooling, and lubrication have all been drastically improved. The most noticeable engine change is the new two-piece tuned port intake manifold. The upper part of the manifold has equal length runners which help broaden the torque curve by improving air distribution. The tuned port intake manifold also features a built-in PCV system which eliminates external PCV hoses on the engine. This internal PCV valve is easily accessible on top of the manifold. Passages within the intake manifold route crankcase vapors into the intake airstream. Here's how the tuned port manifold's internal PCV system works. Clean air is drawn into the engine. The air finds its way through the block to the lifter valley area. From the lifter valley area, a passage in the intake manifold delivers the crankcase vapors to the PCV valve. The PCV valve then meters the crankcase vapors into the intake airstream so that the vapors can be burned by the engine. The new rail uses an integral fuel pressure regulator. The regulator assembly can be serviced by releasing the snap ring. The manifold uses a new two-pipe fuel rail with quick disconnect fittings. Another noticeable change concerns the flywheel. Eight bolts now retain the flywheel instead of the six used on previous designs. This broadens clamp load and reduces stress points and increases durability. Some modifications have also been made at the front of the engine. The end of the crankshaft, for instance, is tapered for the installation of a press-fit harmonic balancer. The press-fit harmonic balancer reduces the possibility of balancer chucking. A special puller must be used to remove the balancer. A shield protects the crank sensor from flying debris. Coolant flow through the front cover has also been improved. A modified timing chain and damper assembly improves chain control at all RPM and during torque reversals. A new camshaft thrust plate located on the front of the block helps prevent camshaft chucking. The 3800 tuned port injection engine uses a camshaft that features extra duration on the exhaust lobes. Keeping the exhaust valve open longer produces cleaner emissions and eliminates the need for an EGR valve. A baffle has been added inside the oil pan to help reduce foaming and improve oil supply. The main bearing configuration is also altered for better engine oiling. Notice that the rope type rear main seal is replaced by a one piece lip seal. The new design improves sealing and serviceability. The 3800 tune port injection engine features innovations that improve its durability, power, emissions performance and serviceability.
Now let's look into the new electronic controls. The electronic control module now manages both engine and transaxle operation. It has a new name which describes its new duties, the powertrain control module or PCM. In addition to its new name, the PCM accomplishes its duties with a revised data stream and diagnostics. For example, cruise control is now integral with the PCM. Here's the dynamic display for the PCM. EGR valve information is not listed because the L27 engine doesn't have an EGR valve. There are some new items on the dynamic display. Like the remote accessory control, also called rack. The rack module is a single unit that handles lots of functions that used to have separate modules. It's important to note the rack level. Depending on vehicle options, three different rack modules can be used. These modules have different part numbers. Be careful when replacing them. There's another new item on the dynamic display. The engine oil life monitor, or EOLM. The engine oil life monitor uses several parameters to operate a lamp that reminds the driver when to have the engine oil changed. Now, let's take a look at the Tech 1. Until you get your 1991 ECM cartridge, you can use your 1990 ECM Plus cartridge for diagnosis. Here's how to access the Tech 1 information. Select the 1990 model year, then press F0 to select the VIN menu. Select VIN L by pressing yes when the L flashes. Press no when the screen asks W car, then press yes to select the C car. L27 engine diagnostics can now be performed. Cruise control diagnostics can also be accessed in a similar way. The Tech 1 indicates cruise control switch condition as seen by the PCM. In addition to the ECM cartridge, two other cartridges support diagnosis. One handles the Tevis Mark IV ABS, while the other takes care of body functions like the rack module, EOLM, and SIR. I think that the engine and diagnostics are going to be appreciated by both you, the technician, and the customers. Now let's look at the first electronically controlled automatic transaxle ever offered in a General Motors luxury sedan, the Hydromatic 4T60E. In this transaxle, the use of electronic controls cuts the usual number of valves in half. The 4T60E uses 14 valves while the 4T60 uses 28 valves. Here are the electronic control components that make this simplification possible. Two shift solenoids are used to select the different gear ranges. The 4T60E also uses a torque converter clutch, or TCC solenoid, and a pulse width modulated, or PWM solenoid. These solenoids, along with the powertrain control module, Eliminate the governor, throttle valve, and several other parts. This transaxle delivers very smooth and consistent shifting. In fact, gear changes are barely noticeable. When the driver wants increased power, heavy throttle upshifts and downshifts are much smoother. The new transaxle looks similar to the 4T60. However, the new 4T60E does not use a governor or TV cable. This transaxle has a bolt-on case extension that allows access to the final drive. This two-piece case also allows more precise machining operations during manufacture. The top of the case extension houses the vehicle's speed sensor. The 4T60E also uses a bolt-on forward servo cover this is different than the snap ring retained servo cover used on the 4T60. A quick look under the bottom pan shows that the manual servo covers bolt on for easy service access.
A service manual is a good place to find specific information on the new 4T60 E transaxle. But it's a good idea to go one step further. With all new components, training is highly recommended. So far, we've seen some things that really make this vehicle go. Let's look at the new anti-lock brake system that really makes this vehicle stop. The Tevis Mark IV anti-lock brake system uses a conventional master cylinder and vacuum booster. In addition to the conventional brake system, several components provide anti-lock capability. Each wheel has a wheel speed sensor. Under each sensor is a tooth ring that rotates at the same speed as the wheels. As the tooth rings rotate, the sensors generate electrical signals which are proportional to wheel speed. The electronic brake control module, or EBCM, located behind the center of the instrument panel, evaluates these signals and determines the amount of braking needed at each wheel during an anti-lock stop. Using the brake hydraulic unit, the EBCM controls the braking at each wheel by operating solenoid valves. These solenoid valves accomplish critical anti-lock hydraulic control. Depending upon their switching stage, these valves can increase, decrease, or maintain hydraulic pressure in the wheel circuits. The Tevis Mark IV anti-lock system uses a brake switch that is similar to traditional brake switches. In addition to performing the usual duties of venting vacuum from the cruise control and operating the stop lamps, this switch incorporates a brake pedal position switch. This switch stops the pump in the brake hydraulic unit from pushing the pedal too far up toward the driver. The anti-lock system is supported by brake system components with increased capacity. Up front, new calipers with larger pads generate braking force along with a larger and thicker vented rotor. The new pads are significantly bigger for increased stopping power and longer pad life. On the rear axle, long-life non-organic linings are used with fully shielded drums. GM training centers offer training classes covering vehicle anti-theft systems and supplemental inflatable restraint systems. In addition, Certified Plus training videos cover the Hydromatic 4T60E transaxle, Tevis Mark IV anti-lock brake system, and dual automatic comfort temp climate controls. Training on new components and systems is always highly recommended. This car is proof that the great American road really does belong to Buick. Buick's premium American motor cars show our commitment to delivering the latest developments in powertrain technology, safety, comfort, and conveniences. That's it for now. Watch for my Buick powered car on the IMSA circuit. And watch for next month's know-how topic, the Riata convertible top.